So, I have just beaten all three of the new monsters for the second title update about a week ago, and now all I have left is to wait for the next content to drop. Now we won't be having another title update until late into next month in November, so for now I'm just stuck here staring at this roadmap, staring very intently at that variant section. Generally I do like making these speculation videos with regards to what's coming next in the future, because it does bring in some excitement for what's next in store for post-endgame Sunbreak. With what we've just witnessed on how brilliantly done the devs have handled the Violet Mizitsune and the Flaming Espinas, further speculation and theories as to what's in store next is always going to be something I enjoy discussing and looking into. Now, going back to that variant word in the roadmap, I'm going to start off by pointing out that it's a variant with an S. That means plural, or more than one. Previously, with each of the last two title updates, there has been more than one new entry when it comes to subspecies or special species. So if I were to bet on anything, I will guess that in terms of variants, we are going to get at least two new entries. How do I know this? Well, it's because there are only two available variant monsters that would make sense in returning to Sunbreak. Now the key word being returning, we don't really know if there's going to be new variants that will be introduced in the game, because there are a handful of good candidates that do deserve a variant, like with Mizitsune getting his own rare species. But for right now, we are going to strictly focus on returning monsters, and as mentioned, there are really only two that would make sense. Up first is the Rusted Kushala Deora, if he returns. He will be the first returning Elder Dragon post Sunbreak, and if I'm being honest, the Rusted Kushala is actually one that I would be most looking forward to. What would that be? Well, it's simply for the fact that after years of having to put up with Kushala Deora's bullshit for countless generations, Monster Hunter Rise was genuinely the first game for most people where Kushala Deora was actually a fun fight. There are countless examples of people and content creators saying that Rise's iteration of the Kushala Deora was a massive improvement and an actual fun fight when compared to the Kushala of old, and that's pretty much the only selling point for me when it comes to his rusted counterpart returning for Sunbreak. I have had the pleasure, or displeasure, of fighting the rusted Diora for the first time in 4 Ultimate, and yeah, this guy was shit. Like every other Kushala Diora before Rise, this guy was a shite experience for me, and it's the same old song and dance. Annoying wind armor, the fact that he flies around 90% of the time, and half the time you either can't land a hit on him, or just completely being bounced off because of that bastard wind barrier. So the fact that I'm actually looking forward to him returning to Sunbreak and not vehemently wishing that this thing would stay dead really speaks volumes in how well the Kushal Deora has been revamped and improved in Rise. Plus, with how well all of the Elder Dragons have been handled in Sunbreak, I really am looking forward to how Rusted Kushal Deora will be handled if he does show up in November. And now we move on to our next candidate. A monster that I regretfully have never faced before but really wanted to. A monster that I have no footage of. So you're just gonna have to stare awkwardly at this PNG image of him throughout the remainder of the video. And a monster that, let's be honest, is literally the one that makes the most sense in returning in November. His younger form and his adult form is already in the game, so that in itself already gives it away. It's the chaotic Gormagala. A very poor and unfortunate Gormagala that had his process of turning into a Shigaru Magala interrupted, so it lives the rest of its days utterly traumatized and suffering because of this, becoming more violent and powerful, plus being able to use abilities and attacks from both versions of Magalas. I'm sorry, but there really isn't any excuse in not having this guy return. Not only are the foundations there, but just by this guy's lore and backstory alone, it really just adds a lot of intrigue to the monster. And not only that, but his equipment is something that should be mentioned too. Each of his weapon types have terrible affinity, but if you get afflicted with the Frenzy Virus, then later overcoming it, each of Chaotic Gormagala's weapons will gain a positive affinity. Now that sounds way too specific, since there's only two monsters that can inflict you with the Frenzy Virus in Sunbreak, meaning that you won't really gain much of the benefits of using Chaotic Gore's weapons for Atmos of Sunbreak's roster, but it would be interesting if the devs add a new skill towards Chaotic Gore's armor set, where it constantly inflicts you with the Frenzy Virus. Similar with how Magnum Marlow's or Geismagorm's armor set inflicts you with their respective negative ailments. 
Plus, this would be an improvement in a monster having their weapons gimmick stay intact and not being used as a skill. Now what I mean by this is that along with Chaotic Gold Magala, the Sir Regios has his own unique gimmick where each of his weapons recovers sharpness or ammunition every time you evade. And unfortunately, that unique gimmick got turned into a skill for the Sir Regios' armor set. I mean, it's cool that now every weapon can get this special sharpness ability, but it took away the uniqueness of Sir Regios' weapons in Sunbreak. So I do hope that if the Chaotic Gormagala does return, so too does the special gimmicks for his weapons. The Chaotic Gormagala really is one of the most unique and interesting monsters in the series in terms of how it's formed and its concept. Even if I've never fought this thing before, the need to fight this thing, especially in a more updated setting in the 5th generation, is at an all-time high for me. I can even put him on the same level as the Raging Bracadias and how well that monster was handled in Iceborne. And plus, just listen to his theme song in the background. It's frantic, it's all over the place, and it just fits so well to what this monster is and how his fight could be. An absolutely perfect candidate to return if you're looking for a monster that will suit as a difficult endgame hurdle before the last title update comes afterwards. These are the two monsters that personally I really want to return in the 5th generation just due to how interesting it would be in fighting them in a more updated setting and only the future will tell if either both of them show up, one of them show up or worst case scenario none of them return. But in the meanwhile we have a hell of a long time in farming the current new monsters. Now, I have covered all three of the new monsters in the second title update on my second channel, Chef Rollo HD, so if you want to go check that out and see how I do for each fight, then I strongly suggest you go ahead and visit, because all three of the new monsters have been some of the most insane intense fights so far in Monster Hunter Rise. I swear I did not have a single comfortable moment from fighting the new additions, and quite frankly I got my ass handed to me more than a few times during recording. So as of right now, that'll be where I will upload all of my let's plays for the foreseeable future. Chef Rolly HD, all the episodes where I left off from my fight with the guys Mugom is there, all the way to my encounter with the new Risen Camellios. And until next time, please be sure to leave your opinions down below, do leave a like, and I shall see you in the next one.